Hello, Cat. Hello, Catajina's children. It's John again in Scotland. And I hope that you enjoyed yesterday's story. Can you remember the name of the bear? Uh, Yakshipan Manyadridge? Hmm. Uh, Duck, though Paddington. Paddington. Uh, and I'm not going to try to speak Polish. Because that is all. Um, ah, jak pan ma na imię is what I should have said, of course. <laughs> That's why I won't try to speak Polish. So, I will speak slowly. It is... What was that noise? Weird. I got a nidridge in the house. Somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so, we shall read another story about Paddington. I should have told you a bit about Paddington before I started yesterday. Paddington is from Peru. He is from darkest Peru, we are told, in the first book. And he uh, he comes to London um, to, because his Aunt Lucy can't look after him anymore. And uh, he ends up living with a family in central London called the Browns. So his name is Paddington Brown, and they live in a house in West London, and he makes their life much more interesting. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so what should we have? I will send, I will send Katajina, I will send your mother a list of the books I have, uh, so you can choose one. <clears throat> I don't know, tomorrow or the day after. Uh, and tonight I shall read Paddington in the garden, I think. He, he likes gardening. It's very peaceful. Um, but he doesn't do it very... He does not do it very well. Uh, yes, Paddington in the garden. <coughs> I will start. One morning, Paddington went out into the garden and began to make a list of all the nice things he could think of about being a bear and living with the Browns. He had a room of his own and a warm bed to sleep in. He likes sleeping, Paddington. Paddington likes sleeping. I like sleeping. And he had marmalade, that's his favourite food, marmalade for breakfast every morning. In darkest Peru, he had, he had only been allowed marmalade on Sundays. This list was so long, he had almost run out of paper, before he realised he had left out one of the nicest things of all. The garden. Apart from the occasional noise from a nearby building site, it was so quiet and peaceful that it didn't seem like being in London at all. But nice gardens don't just happen by magic. They usually require a lot of hard work. And the garden at number 32 Windsor Gardens, that's the address of the Browns, where Paddington lives, the garden at number 32 Windsor Gardens was no exception. Mr. Brown had to cut the lawn twice a week. And Mrs. Brown was always kept busy weeding the flower beds taking the little weeds out of the flowers, out, out of the ground. There was always something to do. Even Mrs. Bird lent a hand when she had a spare moment. Mrs. Bird is the, cle the, the house, I don't know, the woman who cleans the Brown's house. And she, uh, she and Paddington are always getting in trouble because Paddington likes to make a mess. It was Mrs. Bird who first suggested giving Jonathan and Judy each a piece of the garden. 
I'm sorry, it was Mrs. Bird who first suggested giving Jonathan, Judy and Paddington a piece of the garden. It will keep certain bears out of mischief, she said unmeanly. Uh, it will be fun for Jonathan and Judy as well. Mr. Brown agreed that it was a very good idea, and he marked out three areas at the far end of the lawn. Paddington was most excited. I, I don't suppose there are many bears who have their own garden, he said. Early the next morning, all three of them went to work in the garden. Judy decided to make a flower bed, and Jonathan had his eye on some old paving stones. Paddington didn't know what to do. In the past, he had found that gardening was much harder than it looked, especially when you only had paws. Paws are, are what animals have instead of hands and feet. In the end, armed with a jar of Mrs. Bird's homemade marmalade, he borrowed Mr. Brown's wheelbarrow and set off to look for ideas. His first, st his first stop was a stall in the market, where he bought a book called How to Plan Your Garden. It came complete with a large packet of seeds, and if the picture on the front cover was true, it was no wonder that Mr. Trug, the author of the book, looked happy, because he seemed to spend most of his day lying in a hammock. Hammocks are beds made out of little bits of rope, like they used to use on uh, old ships. I've got a hammock. It's lovely and the most comfortable things in the world. By the end of the book, Mr. Trug, without lifting a finger, was surrounded by blooming flowers. Paddington decided it was very good value indeed, especially when the owner of the bookstall gave him two pence in change. Mr. Trug's book was full of useful hints and tips. The first one suggested that before starting work, it was a good idea to close your eyes and to try to picture what the garden would look like when it was finished. <laughs> Paddington walked into a lamppost by mistake <laughs> and decided to read another page or two, and there he found a much better idea. Mr. Trug advised standing back from the garden and looking from a safe distance, preferably somewhere high up. Paddington knew just the spot. By the time Paddington reached the building site near the Browns' house, it was already the middle of the morning, and the men were having a tea break. He placed his jar of marmalade on a wooden platform for safekeeping, and sat on a pile of bricks for a rest while he considered what to do. There was no one about, but there was a ladder nearby. Mr. Trug was right. The Brown's garden looked very different from high up. But before he had time to get his breath back, Paddington heard the sound of an engine starting up. He peered through a gap, and as he did, his eyes nearly popped out of his head, because, of he, because he was surprised. On the ground, just below him, a man was emptying a load of concrete on the spot where he had just left his valuable jar of marmalade. Paddington scrambled back down the ladder as fast as his little legs would carry him, reached the bottom of the, gra of the ladder, and the foreman, i.e. The, the chief builder, uh, came around the corner. 
Is anything wrong? asked the man. You look very upset. My jar of marmalade has been buried, exclaimed Paddington, pointing to the pile of concrete. It had some of Mrs. Bird's best golden chunks in it. I, I won't ask how your jar got there, said the foreman, turning to Paddington, and his, as, as his men set to work clearing the concrete into small, pile, uh, into small piles. More, I won't ask what you were doing up that ladder. I, I'm very glad of that, said Paddington, politely raising his hat. Suddenly there was a whirring sound from, from somewhere overhead, and, to Paddington's surprise, the platform landed, has it, landed at Paddington's feet. Oh, my marmalade! he exclaimed thankfully. Your marmalade? repeated the foreman, staring at the jar. Did you say marmalade? That's right, said Paddington. I put it there ready for my elevenses. Elevenses, uh, very, um, very important to Paddington. They are a way of rela they are a cup of tea and something to eat always every morning at eleven o'clock. So uh, they're called elevenses. It's not a word we use nowadays. It must have been taken up there by mistake, and now the top has come off. <clears throat> it was the foreman's turn to look as if he could hardly believe his eyes. That's um, special quick-drying cement, he wailed. It's probably rock-hard already, ruined by a bear's marmalade. No one will ever give me money for it now. I will, said Paddington. I have an idea. Paddington was busy for the rest of the week. But when the builders saw the rock garden that he had made, they were very impressed. And the foreman even gave him some plants to finish it until his seeds started to grow. It's... It's National Garden Day on Saturday, he said. There are some very famous people judging it. I'll spread the word around. You, you never know your luck. The foreman was as good as his word, i.e. the foreman kept his promise. And on Saturday, half the neighbourhood turned up at number 32 Windsor Gardens to see the judges. <laughs> Paddington nearly fell over backwards <laughs> with surprise when he saw that none other person than Mr. Lionel Trug was a judge. <laughs> it's, it's very good of you to get out of your hammock, Mr. Trug, Paddington exclaimed. Uh, not at all, said Lionel Trug. M my pleasure. I must say I love your orange stones. Where did you find them? I didn't find them, said Paddington. I think they found me, thanks to the builders. Well, congratulations, said Mr. Trug, as he handed Paddington a gold star. It's good to see a young bear taking up gardening. I hope you will be the first of many. Who would have believed it, said Mr. Brown, as the crowd disappeared. You must write and tell Aunt Lucy all about it, said Mrs. Bird. They'll be very excited in Peru when they hear the good news. Paddington thought that was a very good idea, but he had something to do first. He wanted to add one more important item to his list of all the nice things there were about being a bear and living with the Browns. He wrote carefully, I have my own rock garden. Then he signed his name and added his special, his special paw print, just to show it was genuine. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I thought it was a lovely little story. Um, have uh, a wonderful day where you are, and... Uh, 